So what are some of the things that can cause their electrical components to go bad? Okay, the biggest, the biggest thing for electrical stuff is heat and vibration. Mm -hmm. Those things generate power, right? Yeah. Okay, or they use power. Stata motor uses it. It gets hot. It gives you energy, but it gets hot. If it's generating, it gives you, it gives you back energy, but it gets hot. So heat is a, is a uh, the things expand and contract, expand and contract, they get hot, and, and that, that's a killer for, uh, mm -hmm. for anything. And especially on off-road stuff, or especially two strokes, where the high frequency vibration are, like you guys out in the, out in the trails, riding through dirt and crap and mud, I've seen, I can't tell you how many ATVs, side-by-sides I've seen with, with a, where the rectifier is uh, mounted, it's caked yeah. with mud. And, and that mud is like, it's like a, <clears throat> a brick yeah. over, the, over the cooling fins. It destroys the, the ability for the thing to cool itself off, yeah. and it fails, and the people go like, I don't know why that failed. Well, because it looked it looked like it was built like an Adobe hut around it. Yeah. It was just yeah. so heat and vibration uh, are the biggest killers of. of uh, so does it product. does it affect it like uh, when they do run through deep mud or water when they get that water up over the machine? You know, there's guys running up to the steering wheel on a side by side handlebars on an ATV. I mean, how's that? Because it's hot something's hot and then it's getting then it cools down yeah, real quick and then it gets hot again that's a problem but i think the real long-term thing is when they're going through these mud bog holes yeah and the stuff doesn't like water wicks away right yeah. it's gone yeah uh, guess what happens with mud when yeah. something's hot it sticks to it yeah. oh then you get this crust on there mm -hmm. oh then you go through another one oh and stick on another layer of that mm -hmm. stuff i've seen rectifier regulators uh on one particular brand that uh, catch a lot of yeah. uh, because of the where where it's mounted, mm -hmm. and it catches a ton of of mud and stuff. And uh, even if they're not in water, if they're in a a, a a slurry area, and they're just kicking it up, kicking it up, kicking it up, and they cover the regulator. Yeah, it it can't cool itself off anymore. Yeah, and that's what takes them off. And you have a regulator for um, like one or two brands that has a fuse in it, so it's going to blow that fuse before it. We does have damage. we have a replacement. Uh, specifically for uh, some of the big uh, Polaris razors, yeah, and uh, it's a 70 amp uh, a rec MOSFET or... rectifier regulator. Yeah, it's 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 like super beefy. Uh, it's got a it's got an inline fuse so that if anything does go wrong in there, yeah. and it it has a meltdown because you covered it in mud, it has a fuse to protect itself from from doing any further damage to the rest of the vehicle. But uh, it's, it, it's the biggest, baddest regulator on the market right now, 70 amps, so uh, it's been pretty successful for us. Basically, the, uh, the switching inside the unit uh -huh. is very, very quick. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it runs much cooler, it's much more efficient than the standard shunt type. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's, uh, it's a great, it's a really good product. And we were the first in the aftermarket industry to use uh, MOSFET technology. Yeah. And like I was telling you about other things, like there's a bunch of people out there copying it. Yep, they'll take it if it works.